Hi, I'm Tommy Van Cool, and welcome to this tutorial. Pro Tools, Nuendo, Reaper, Ableton. Many platforms and many workflows. Are their exported files, mixed down or masters, really different from each other? Does the engines of these platforms actually return different results? If so, is the difference really that important? That's what we'll discover in this video. <laughs> Today we analyze several platforms, several DOS, just to see if ever there is some kind of difference uh, in the functioning of the uh, engine that are so big that produces some kind of difference, substantial difference, uh, on the exported files and consequently on the job done. I should say that somebody has already made a test between Pro Tools and Reaper. His name is Steven Andrew by Stream Records and the video uh, to which I'm referring to is uh, here uh, above. However, uh, today we'll not perform this test uh, Reaper Pro Tools because it is already made and it's re already really very clear. But uh, what we are doing today is to go to Test Reaper, but also other platforms like Nuendo, like Fruity Loop, like Oda CD, as well as Ableton Live. At the same time, also Mixed Bus by Horizon and uh, here I open Reaper and I go to import a file, a master it, I produce it. It is sampled at 96 kilohertz, 32 bit. Okay, I take only this 30 seconds of this master. The song is uh, Takero by Barbara Vagnini on the digital store. So here down below, uh, you find a link to the song. However, now what I will do is to export these uh, 30 seconds to import them back and to see what happens with 30 seconds uh, exported in the same way of the same file, but from New End or from Ableton Live, from Fruity Loop, from Other City, and so on and so on. Now let's go to render these. I have uh, already here Reaper. Of course, I will try to keep the sample rate and the quantization depth, which is a 32-bit, but this is not so much important. Indeed, I already made this test, and I invite you to do the same. To redo everything, you will see that there is not any difference. So that uh, that's why here, okay, uh, he tells me that the file exists already exist okay because i have already made this uh, this check this test so that uh, now i have to close reaper so i should save everything about this project and let's go to open the other platforms and we make the same identical operation now Okay, I was not certainly there to show you everything because it's a long and tedious operation and so it's a totally useless. At the end, it's just to import the file and to export them so that... Okay, um, I just stop here a bit on Ableton Live because um, there's a small feature that you have to keep in mind when you import a file here. Um, of course, who knows Ableton Live? Uh, more probably he knows uh, what I'm talking about, but uh, who doesn't know it? Okay, uh, it doesn't use it so frequently, perhaps uh, um, cannot know exactly or can forget about this uh, feature. Once the um, file is uh, imported, uh, clicking over it, uh, you enter in this section. You have to remind it to deactivate warp. These, um, I, I found it active. And uh, to move these pointers exactly at the beginning of the file, otherwise the file is cut. For that reason, when you uh, export it and you import back to the other platform, the risk is uh, to fail the comparison, because clearly the file is not in phase and it will fail any kind of test. Why? Because the file it is like corrupt, respect the original. Okay, perf perhaps corrupted is not exactly uh, the term that should I use, but okay, you understand me what I mean. Now I will show you something else on another application that can treat your test. Indeed, here is a Fruity Loop. Okay, when you run the program on the master channel, you will find a default limiter. You have to remind it to remove it because otherwise it will introduce a systematic error. After that, you can proceed to export the time that you want. If you don't want to export the whole file, OK, 
okay, then you can export just uh, the first 30 seconds as I did, for instance, starting from the second minute zero and so on for a length, uh, I don't know, 30 seconds, as exactly I did just to test. Let's be back to Reaper. Here I have opened a project and uh, as you can see here, the first track is the original track, while uh, from the second track on, there are all the exports I've made uh, platform by platform. Let's start to compare Reaper with itself, okay? Uh, to see if it ever introduces some kind of difference during the export of its own files. It's fair to try uh, to do this because uh, taking things for granted is always negative when you are uh, uh, performing measures. And after that, we will try with uh, Ableton, then Audacity, then Fruity Loop, and then New End, and afterwards the two exports from Mixbus. Why two exports? Because there is a legend that the, if the track goes through a bus and then goes to the master, it is colored. If it goes directly to the master, it is transparent. Mixbus is transparent. Then it is legitimate and right if you are a real audit engineer, if you define yourself as a such, to verify this information. Why? Because when you go to make choices, these must be prudent and not based on myths, on legends, on whatever you find on the internet. So you are supposed to know what you're doing, not what you hear from the internet. Let's check all these platforms. So I'm going to play, and then gradually, as you noticed, all the tracks are phased reversed. And so there will be a test as I unmute each track. They must cancel each other if they are identical. If they are not, well, we will also see it, and we will listen to it. And in case of they are occurring, okay, we will try to understand uh, which kind of differences are and uh, what uh, are causing them, okay? Let's go and play. With itself, it's practically perfect. Now, let's go further with the other ones. So with, uh, let's see with uh, Ableton Live, how it behaves. Also here, there is uh, practically nothing. Let's try now with uh, Oda City. Also here, it's totally mute. So they know each other, and until here we have seen that Reaper, Ableton, Audacity are practically identical to each other. Now let's try in a different order, because if A is equal to B, B is equal to C, then A is equal to C. But we are not here into matrix algebra where A can be different from C. So uh, if Reaper is equal to Ableton, Ableton is equal to Audacity is equal to Reaper, but also to Ableton, but also to the other one. Let's see and verify it. Excellent. They know each other. Okay. Let's go ahead now with Oda City, Frodi Loop, and so on. Noodle. Noodle. Also here, Noodle. What's the conclusion now? It doesn't really matter which platform you are exporting. The result is practically identical. So an export uh, from a Protoss is equal to an export from Reaper, is equal to an export from Ableton, is equal to an export from Audacity, is equal to an export from Fruity Loop, it is equal to an export from New End. Again, for those who started watching the video from the middle, and notice that I don't have a Protoss export in here, it's simply because I don't intend to to do something that has already been done and widely demonstrated. The link to the video is above and also below in the description box. Now, it's the time to understand Mixbus for a moment. Um, first of all, let's check if it is true that between an export that have been made directly from the track to the master, it differs, really differs, from an export made between bus and master track. Let's start and listen to the first one. Maybe here it's to do, yeah, to be simply consistent. Hey, 
Well, they are practically identical to each other. So uh, to create a bus that uh, routes the track to the master track and so on, it's really useless. It doesn't, it's useless. So, well, now let's see if there are any difference between Mixbus uh, by Horizon and one of any of the other platforms here. So, because I'm on Reaper right now, okay, let's start uh, from Reaper, okay? It's not a, it's not a problem. And here, let's set uh, everything up. Okay, let's go and play. Okay, we have listened to that. There is a, some kind of noise, some kind of smaller raspberries uh, underneath there uh, that are not audible with a uh, uh, music program underneath. And we have already seen that in another video where I've spoken about the colors of the plugins and so on. Uh, is uh, here uh, above. In, uh, in the musical context, uh, it's not possible to listen to them because uh, they are so small that those differences are notable. Let's be pedantic now. We want to understand the details. Let's to understand why and where this occurs. Check the indicators of the view meters. I turn off the microphone here in the studio, otherwise you listen to the environmental noise. Hey, hey. Perfect. What I wanted to point to you out here is that you actually what you hear is very small, but is this kind of distortion and kind of harmonic or intermodulation distortion. And this little subgroup with these two tracks are is here for this. This distortion that Harrison generates when one clearly approaches the limit of the channel and therefore the limit of analog saturation, okay, is normal. And it is even logical because uh, it is sold, it is dispatched as a hardware emulation. Recall that the Harrisons were mixers at that time made with a certain component. In short, they were using, for instance, carbon resistors. And that are not linear at all, among the other things. Which means that they have an inductive part, so the behavior at certain frequency. It is different from the behavior in the other ones. However, the resistance still in, uh, within its uh, tolerances and cannot be defined as inductance. But we know that um, there are these inaccuracies due to the components used uh, at the time, plus inside it used a MUA741. I invite everyone to read the Bruce Sweden's book in which he talks about it. It's his favorite mixer and himself clearly says it wasn't great from an electronic standpoint, but it was sonically great. This is um, indeed with regards to his tastes from the point of view of the sound. So I have here uh, generated a monochromatic signal. The frequency is one kilohertz. And I did export it and import it once again into Mixbus and exported it again from Mixbus. Just to check what is occurring up there. What is generated by Mixbus itself? Uh, what is the harmonical content? What kind of uh, distortion is uh, intermodulation or uh, in harmonic distortion? I have no clue till the moment in which I perform some kind of measurement. Then the second track here, uh, Mixbus 1 kilohertz loop, is uh, the same file that I exported from Mixbus to be analyzed. Let's see now, uh, let's go and play and let's see what happens. I hope everything is okay here. Here it is. We have here a third harmonic. So here also we are talking about the beauty of uh, the even harmonics and then we land up on the uh, odd ones. However, we have noticed that uh, there is a kind of uh, harmonic distortion. Yes, this is what is called a monochromatic signal and uh, it's almost audible. Okay, very difficult to to do it because it's a so low, so, so little. We will see also how to listen to it in the reality just in a moment. Into the musical context, uh, I just uh, pushed up the volume on Mixbus uh, just to make it work uh, um, 
at the upper limit of the channel. Below the negative 6, negative 7 decibels, it's perfectly transparent. Mixbus is transparent. It is exactly like all the other platforms. So uh, let's now to make a test between the generated kilohertz and the Mixbus kilohertz. Play. Oh, sorry, here I jumped something. Let's redo. Okay. And here we have the third harmonic. This is just a remain of the fundamental of the root one. We are here at uh, negative 92, negative 93 decibels. The third harmonic is uh, clearly here, okay? Uh, if I switch off the microphone, you perhaps you could listen to it um, in uh, in your headset. The level is a solo that I have no clue if you are really able to listen to it via YouTube even. Okay, fine. This is the real level of the uh, harmonical content. So the small noise we listened to before, you understand, you fully understand that in the moment in which I turn on the music, automatically this is not hearable any longer. So the level of the generated harmonics is uh, totally relevant. So in short, having to necessarily apply the myth circulating on the internet for which I exit the door, I enter in another one, I do all this path, uh, signal path, wasting time, asking the customer for money for this time, and uh, then re-entering into the door just to get a kind of effect such a small, which is practically insignificant. It doesn't make much sense. And whoever says otherwise must prove it in exactly the same way. Of course, if one wanted to really call the sound with uh, such distortions we have seen in the video above, how to do it? And with uh, which plugins? Using, for example, as I said in that video, RED17, RED37 by Waves. Or simply an integrated distortion of the platform, maybe we can achieve similar things. Maybe not quite the same, but very similar, and in fact many do it, it's right on some tracks, to fatten them up, and so on. I do myself, for example, uh, I generally use the Audiority X7 rather than, let's say, integrated uh, distortion. It depends on the situation and the final result I want to achieve. But at least it's more audible, much more intense than that little noise we got, kind of raspberry. I make it listen to again because it is quickly forgotten. Give me just a second and I'm going to play. Here is a completely unmeaningful. You can hear it completely insignificant. In fact, in this video, we have verified that there is not any difference in terms of engine that introduces significant variations or whatever in the exported files. So what is exported with Ableton is identical to what is exported with Reaper, is identical uh, to what is exported with Audacity, is identical to what is exported with Freddy Loop, with Nuendo, with uh, Mixbus, except for the small Raspberry, and identical to what is exported with Reaper. The myth of differences is practically erased from the evidence of the facts we have all seen here today. Fine, I'm just at the end of this uh, small uh, demonstration video and I invite you to subscribe to my channel, to click on the bell just to be informed for new videos that I will upload and uh, to put an eye like. Uh, thanks for watching. Time for a bonus. It is easier to deceive than to make it clear that you have been deceived. The real Game Changer plugin is the one installed between the front edge of the console and the back of the chair. Think about it every time you need or you think to need to buy a DAW or a plugin.